You're locked in to the show that gets people hard. Really hard. You're locked in Please to the let me come. It's time for a little afternoon, Joe Cronin. A little afternoon at nighttime. Man, the raw rating is in, and this is not good, but it's exactly as predicted, guys. It's ex- the Monday Night Raw rating. I just like ex- <laughs> exactly as predicted, man. Leave a comment down below. Click the like button. Subscribe to the channel, or your family members will get in the car fire. Um, what's up? Let's start this thing off really good. The chat is My live. Tank is Send. officially empty. Now. Your tank's empty, you loser. <coughs> Where is everybody? <laughs> yeah. You ever you ever see two Italian people like you know talking to each other and the, they go they go oh paisan or whatever and you're just like your people are gross. Please let me come. everybody i'm joe cronin click the like button and stick the thumb directly up my sphincter right now come on in let's do it About that Monday Night Raw rating, everybody. Talk about being dead right. Listen, I've been I've been wrong quite a bit. I've been wrong quite a bit. But we were dead on last night. Raw lost a couple hundred thousand people in the third hour last night. Not to mention a couple hundred thousand people in the main event, which was trash as expected and as we said good lord was monday night raw atrocious last night no doubt about it 100 percent monday night atrocious we're gonna start calling it monday night mid card last night was absolutely monday night mid card make no mistake about it right now seth rollins is a mid carder let me just let's just look at everybody real quick austin theory and mustafa mid card if not lower mid card. Seth Rollins, mid card. Right? He's one of the bigger stars, but he's mid card. Amos, Omos, mid card, if not lower. <clears throat> Those jobbers below that. Um, there is uh, Elias, mid card. Gable, mid card. Elias and the fat guy, whatever, mid card. He's mid-card. JBL is not. 
Gargano's mid card, Baron Corbin's mid card, JBL is is top card, and he's but he's not wrestling. Baron Corbin and Gargano mid card, JBL upper mid card, uh, but he's not really an active wrestler, so he doesn't really count. But uh, JBL's better than all these people. Bailey is mid card, if not lower than that. Uh, Bianca Belair mid card, I would say maybe maybe t- one of the upper mid card. I I think Bianca might be one of the best uh, things here, and I don't even really like her promos anymore. But she does seem solidified a bit, but not really. She's still mid card. She's not a superstar, superstar, or a megastar, or anything like that. She's not on the level of Trish ever was. And there's what's her face uh, mid card. So Monday night mid card. So we will call Monday night Raw. Monday night mid card. Give me the raw rating. Let's see. Um, as I said, I said this last night on the Monday Night Raw review. I said that WWE Raw will be lucky. They may they may sink down to a one point seven. Is what I said last night. They'll sink down to a one point seven. At first, I said one point six, and then I said, "All right, maybe one seven because they've been well. They've been doing well recently." But nope, they slipped down to a 1.6. I was only off by about 500,000 people. Um, or wait, no, I was off by what? 1,640,000. Uh, I was off by 60,000. I was off by about 60,000 or so. Absolutely friggin' abysmal. Their third hour sunk to uh, a super low. Raw was six for the night behind the Chicago Bears and New England Patriots game. That game did 10 million viewers. 10 million people. And they even did 1.4 million viewers on ESPN2. So Monday Night Football on ESPN2 damn near beat Raw. That third hour looking rough, bro. Raw was eighth in women behind the NFL related shows. Seventh in people eighteen to thirty four. Yikes. Huge third hour dip. You want to see the numbers for the hours? As predicted. As predicted. A huge drop off in the third hour. We said this yesterday. Seven one point seven, one point seven, one point four. Talk about a dive in the third hour, man. Because people saw the first couple hours of the show, and then they saw what was booked for the main event, and they said, well, what the fuck is this? What the F is this? That's what people said. They were like, wow, okay. So the first couple hours of Raw were just blah, and the third hour is garbage. And guess what, guys? It was garbage. So no one really saw it. I bet you I bet you lots of those people who got their given credit, the 1.4, I bet you 400,000 of those people were asleep. The show was so bad. How do you stay awake through that show last night? Dude, I have more life tonight. I think I did more work today in my real life. I have more pep tonight than I had last night, except the part where I started snapping for a few minutes. I have more energy tonight because I didn't have three hours of Raw to put me to sleep. I at least watched The Rock's daughter debut on NXT. NXT tonight is probably better than Raw, but not much, but still it's better. I'm watching it right now. Now... You know, these little midgets are running around here, dragging off and whatever. Uh, Whatever. It is what it is. Shit bomb. I watched my state's Senate debate tonight, and Jesus Christ. Fetterman buffered like the internet the entire night. Fetterman? Who's that? Is that the guy who doesn't wear a suit or whatever? He wears, like, sweatshirts? Gerald Armstrong, thank you for the five dollars and becoming a five dollar shit bomb. He seems like a moron, so that makes sense, man. That guy does seem like a like a like a tardo. But uh, hey, man, I, what do I know? I'm uh, probably be in jail soon, so I, what do I know? How you doing, my friend? And the NFL game was a blowout. Yeah, by the half, the Patriots were in trouble, and by the third quarter, it was over. So that's tough. They should have had a better showing in the third hour, maybe.
Thank you, uh, Retro Neon says, Triple H and Stephanie need to leave this company. Sean is the only hope for this company. What? Man, I don't think so. What are you talking about? I don't believe that at all. Triple H ran NXT amazingly. Shawn, Shawn Michaels is running this NXT, and this NXT kind of sucks. So I don't, I mean, God, Vic Joseph is so fucking annoying, man. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshipers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Do you think Josh Matthews' voice sounds so annoying as commentator to you? Yes. The stuff he says is good. It's just his voice that sounds terrible. Yes. It's too high pitch. Also, how did your Patriots lose to the Bears? The Bears freaking suck. Come on. I don't know, man. I don't know what I mean because we couldn't figure out our, our quarterback situation, I suppose. Wow, Dragonov is bleeding from the mouth right now, by the way. He's going to go out bleeding from the mouth. Dragonov is almost asleep, and he is. He's out. Dragonov, he's out. Son of a bitch, let him go. Son of a bitch, let him go. Oh, that was pretty good from Joseph, showing some signs of life. Wow, he's bleeding all over the place. I thought they weren't going to do blood in WWE. I mean, I guess they can in NXT. Wow, Dragonov is covered in his own blood. He was put out by the midget. That's what I'm going to call him. I mean, but what, what, what do you say? Blood capsule, maybe. Um, uh, balls to the wall, says it's Kastan. That's weird. Um, yeah, I don't know about, about uh, HPK. Pretty good. I mean, I love HPK. I think he should be in charge of a lot of things. But, again, it's like, I don't know, man. Triple H was doing great in NXT, and he's done some good stuff recently. But, man. That Raw last night was atrocious, and that rating tells you everything you need to know about it. What in a, a horrific Raw rating. I mean, dude, that third hour, and I said it last night. I said, I cannot wait. I wish we had the time, the, the, the stamp, the video edit of me saying, I cannot wait for the rating to come out tomorrow. And then I said, I think I said, I can't wait for the third hour rating. Ooh, that's going to be great. Bailey. About 300,000 people bailed on seeing Bailey. Like I said, go away heat. She's got go home heat, go away heat, get off my TV heat, whatever you want to call it. She has the type of stuff that it's like, yeah, I don't want to see that. Like a lot of wrestlers, it's like I, th I think like, yeah, I want to watch them, see if they get hurt or I hate them. I want to see them lose or man, this guy is annoying but entertaining, and I hate the bad guy, but he's kind of fascinating, and I want to see the good guy win, but, wow, the bad guy is interesting. But Bailey, I just think I wanna t I'm want i not watching that. And there's the main event for the other night, sure enough, is Bailey, and it's just terrible. And the rating is terrible, and, it sh I mean, it shows you there. Like, boom, that is horrific. Um, yeah, I mean, there was a lot to be desired last night. I don't know what they're doing, but I'm not really going to get into it that much. I'm just going to, cause I, I, I did last night. It really just depresses me. Um, as I said last night, it, it really just depresses me. The Monday night raw depresses me, but I knew it was going to be bad. And I knew the third hour was going to be really bad. And you knew it because it was terrible. And it's like, it's, it's not, we're not making it up. We're not making it up that it's terrible. You know what I mean? It, it is clearly terrible. And so it's not something where I'm being ridiculous or I'm, I'm wrong. I'm not even wrong. I'm right. No, Road Dog can't tell me I'm wrong. Triple H can't tell me I'm wrong. Nobody can tell me I'm wrong because that rating tells me I'm right. You're 400,000 away from AEW. You're 400,000 people who fell asleep, luckily, so that you got a rating still. Because otherwise, 
you would have had AEW numbers last night. That was terrible. And, and it was bad the week before, and I talked about how they should fix things. And yes, maybe some of it is partially Crown Jewel's fault, but I don't care, man. I don't care what you got to do to make a show interesting, even if you're on the road to Crown Fool. I don't care what it is. You do stuff that's interesting, that's entertaining, and you did not. You just don't entertain, man. Monday Night Raw doesn't want to entertain us. They, they, they can't. They, they want to fail or something. I don't know what it is. But it was clear as day last night that this was going to be the outcome today. We basically nailed the numbers, the prediction of the numbers. We nailed it. Damn near nailed it to a T. You know, by a couple hundred thousand, we were off. And uh, I gave them more credit, to be honest. I gave them the benefit that, oh, you know, maybe, you know, they'll still do kind of all right because Triple H era. This the, I believe this is the worst numbers of the Triple H era. And it was the worst Raw of the Triple H era. And the week before was maybe the second worst. So there you go. It's not hard to figure this out. And it's very easy. I laid out all the problems with the show last night. I've been laying them out for weeks. And not, not only have I been laying them out since even when Triple H arrived, but not only do they not fix the problems, they're getting worse. They're beginning to degrade and get worse. It's like they are purposely destroying the, the whole thing. Like, But they don't care because they're making so much money, so it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Who cares if the w- the, ra- the ratings one million, the ratings two million? Who cares? I mean, that's got to be what they're thinking. Is it what you, do you think USA Network is thinking this? Hey USA Network, give me a call. Hey everybody, just clip this last three minutes and send it to USA Network. You talk about making Vince Russo a consultant. Hey USA Network, anytime you want to give me a call. You know, maybe you got to go, maybe go above the WWE, go behind their uh, mask, go behind the cape, and hit me up. And Vince Russo ain't going to help you. So, you know, USA Network, anytime you want to make put me in charge of the uh, of the Monday show, uh, feel free. I just wanted to be a commentator. That's all I wanted to do. But, man, this, we need more help than that. And, and maybe they're limited, though. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe they're limited to stuff they can't do, and so, therefore, the show will never be good because they pretty much are playing with what they have in their toolbox. And what's in their toolbox is limited, like like Keith Lee. WWE Raw is just like Keith Lee. It's limited, just like Keith Lee. That's what Raw is. So there's your Raw rating. Not good. Bad news. Ugly stuff. Hogan's Beach Shop has a hockey mask with his face. What the hell? Yeah, you know, I I like I like Nikki Cross's body, I guess. Bring back Vince Russo. I mean, it might be better. You bring back Vince Russo, it might be better. If they could just do that. You know, I I'd be in favor of it cuz it's so bad right now. I mean, it can't be any worse. I I don't think he's the answer, but it can't be any worse. The Rock's daughter I thought looked actually pretty good tonight to be honest. Her promo was all right. And she looked all right. And, I mean, dude, listen, if you go back to The Rock when he debuted, he didn't really sound the greatest either, you know? I thought she actually had a pretty good debut for somebody like that. Lots of pressure. You don't think she's going to be involved in something like this. Interesting stuff there. Think about The Rock's promos in, like, 1996 or 1995 or... I don't really remember a promo from him much in 96, but let's go back and listen. Let's see if we can find one. Let's see if we can find one here. Let's see. Rocky I'm just bunched right now thinking about it. It's going to be a feeling like none other. I don't even think words can explain it. Sounds like Dan Kennedy. I don't even think words can explain it. I can't wait. What's got Rocky Maivia so pumped up? His long-awaited World Wrestling Federation debut. What's it going to feel like to walk through that curtain, to enter the hallowed halls of MSG, and to see the squared circle there ready to compete with your teammates at the uh, Survivor Series? And I tell you, it's a feeling of elation right now. I'm so jacked right now. I mean, I could do it right now. And making it all the more... Right now, right now, right now. So it's like, dude, you guys don't... Like, does anybody remember The Rock? The Rock came in super lame. They brought The Rock in. They, they tried to make a big deal out of The Rock. Like, 
This is the son of Rocky Johnson. He's a football player. He's got wrestling in his blood. He's a blue chipper. He's the rock. Man, he's so good. He's the man. He's like like Cush and Jerry Maguire. He's the hot free agent, and he signed here with the WWE, and they made it seem like the biggest deal, which was a good idea, to be honest. It just came off lame. Teammates at the uh, Survivor Series. And I tell you, it's a feeling of elation right now. I'm so jacked right now. I mean, I could do it right now. I can feel right now, right now. So jacked right now, right now. And making it all the more special is Madison Square Garden. Father into I'll the prestigious be, uh, Cauliflower Alley Club in Tampa. This has got to be, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the greatest days in my life. This is, this is the greatest moment in my life. Dad, I love you. Mr. Rocky Johnson. And it was all that stuff. And listen, it's not much different than what his daughter really looked like uh, tonight. You know, I, I would say she was slightly more composed, maybe. So, uh, yeah, then they chanted, die, Rocky, die. That's true. And that was the best thing ever because then The Rock became a douchebag and he brought it up. He became a member of the Nation of Domination and the guy who was supposed to be the wholesome, blue chipper, good guy. Um, man, he cut that promo. You know what I mean? And it was great. I don't remember if this is the promo or not, but let's see. Let's see. That's the gratitude. Here it is, here it is. Thing in this world. So so the rock the rock is a face. He's running around like, yeah, like I'm the Mr. Good Guy. Oh, I'm the Rocky Maya Here I come. Ah. Oh, oh, I do all these crazy like uh and it was so lame. And everybody started chanting, You suck rock and die Rocky die. I mean the die Rocky die chant was hilarious, let's be honest. And then The Rock turns into a bad guy. Okay, you want to tell me to die? Well, I'm going to be a bad guy now. And what does The Rock say but this? What's getting Rocky Mafia found out that the nation... He joins the Nation of Domination, his black brothers. Stand for it, and that is... Except for Owen Hart, who was the only cracker of the group. Fighting your way through. Tell him, Rocky. I got three words. Die... Rocky die. <laughs> I love it. That's the gratitude I get from you pieces of crap for all my blood, my sweat, and my tears. You know, hey, this isn't about the color of my skin. This is about respect. I became the youngest intercontinental champion in WWF history. And what did it get me? In arenas across the country, I heard chants of Rocky sucks. This was a turning point. I loved it. Man, you could really just spend years breaking down the Attitude Era. You know, breaking down the Attitude Era and the, the creation of, you know, from Bret Hart going heel to Shawn Michaels, uh, be, you know, creating DX with Triple H. I mean, there were so many creations that launched people into a different atmosphere, you know, to be honest. It's unbelievable. And, and, and we watched it right before our eyes. As a 14-year-old, I watched it. And, man, the creation of those stars was amazing. You don't even see creations like that anymore, really. Like, when's the last guy, really, that, like, suddenly turned a certain way and it, they they just got electrifying because of it. You know what I mean? Not really. I mean, Roman Reigns in a way, but they'd pushed him so much that he's always felt like a top guy anyhow, so it doesn't matter. But when was the last guy that was lame as hell like The Rock for three years and then overnight it was like, boom. You know what I mean? Like, this guy's on fire. And I think it is Roman that's the closest thing because people were booing him and they were sick of Roman and he sucks. And now Roman comes out and says, acknowledge me. And people are like, oh, my God. But I, I, you know, I, I don't know if I can pinpoint a moment where like he, that's where he changed or whatever. The, the Attitude Era is filled with that. The formation of DX, um, you know, Triple H and Sean, you know, The Rock becoming heel and, and just going full on asshole. And, and being so good, he outshined everybody else in the nation. And Farouk, they had to turn Farouk him in on everything because he couldn't be in there with Farouk because he was just overshadowing the guy. 
And then it was weird. Or where Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was supposed to be a heel, a bad guy, a ringmaster, a Stone Cold Steve Austin, a bad guy, just got super over. And then he had this big moment at King of the Ring where people started really cheering for him and Austin 316 and the next day 316 and, and it's on from there. I mean, when is the last time so many wrestlers were created eventually? You know what I mean? And it all stems from being able to have about 90 seconds to four minutes, five minutes on the mic where they were allowed to do just about anything. Uh, MJF, very similar to cutting promos like this, but MJF has always been a heel since the day he walked into the company. So MJF has always been this way and he's great. That's why I think MJF is more like a million dollar man type of thing where it's like million dollar man has always been in WWF as a heel He's always been a bad guy, and he does it really well. Same thing with MJF. I mean, you could argue MJF can say more on the mic than the Million Dollar Man ever did, but you could not argue really with the Million Dollar Man's box office versus uh, MJF. But, um, again, more similar to that, but it wasn't a creation or a turnabout or a change or a self-made turn you know, that worked out like The Rock or like DX created their own thing. You know, things that just hit. The New Age Outlaws with Road Dogg and, you know, I mean, you can just go down a list of all these creations during the Attitude Era, um, enhancements that were made and that worked, and now it's it's the WWE Raw is full of mid-carders. You know, Bailey, Bianca, mid-card. And in fact, terrible. They drew a horrible rating in the third hour, atrocious rating. They might be lower than mid-card at this point. Bailey is makes me want to turn off my show. No wonder 300,000 people turned it off. I want to turn it off. <clears throat> Monday night mid card. That's the new name of Raw. Mid card. Oh, Nikki's back. She's a mid carder, if not lower, right? Mid card or lower for Nikki Ash, Nikki Cross, whatever she is today. Oh, look at this. The Judgment Day. All mid carders right here. Lower mid carders or mid carders. Monday night mid card. There they are. Monday night mid card. Certainly one of the better things going on in the mid card, but there they are. The OC and AJ Styles, all mid card. AJ Styles used to maybe be able to be a full a, a, a top guy, a top card guy, but AJ Styles said, nah, man, I just want to play video games, man, and now you're with the OC. Well, they're lame. Well, so Finn Balor, he couldn't make it either. A bunch of mid-carders. Here's a mid-card opening uh, Raw. Mid-card, 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 or less. There they are. You're, and The Miz, mid-card. The Miz is mid-card now. Johnny Gargano is mid-card. Our truth mid card or lower, like all these guys, lower. I like them all, but you know that's fine. But a lower mid card show isn't going to carry a show. I don't care if you have three hours or four hours. You need a top. You need top tier talent. You don't got it. You got top tier mid card. Seth Rollins is mid card. Mustafa Ali mid card, lower. Theory mid card or lower. Seth Rollins has become mid card, and he never really was that big on top anyway. Almas, mid-card, if not lower. Bunch of, you know, trolls he's beaten up here. Can we find a star yet? Well, Elias, mid-card. Gable, mid-card. Mid-card, mid-card, mid-card. Big Fatso, mid-card. Matt Riddle, mid-card. JBL, upper mid-card, but he's not really a wrestler. Gargano, mid-card. Baron Corbin, definitely mid-card if not lower. JBL is the biggest star in the show, guys. Hate to say it. JBL is the biggest star. Best on the mic, and if he hopped in the ring to wrestle, it'd be the most exciting thing of the whole show, to be honest. Johnny Gargano, mid-card. Baron Corbin, mid-card. Bailey, mid-card, and certainly low mid-card because she lost 300,000 worth of people because they didn't want to stick around and see her terrible shit. Control, alt, delete, or whatever they're called, are terrible. They, they they literally make me want to change the fucking channel. Monday night mid-card. You heard it here on the Joe Cronin Show first. Forget everybody else's sayings. Monday night mid-card. Did you guys watch Monday night mid-card? I watched Monday night mid-card. Did you like min Monday night mid-card? I don't know. Did you like Monday night mid-card? I don't know. You raised a piece of shit. Hey, what's up, Joe? What up? I know you're talking wrestling now, but I promise you have to watch this. So about an hour ago, there was a debate for Pennsylvania Senate between Dr. Ross and Fetterman. 
Fetterman recently had a stroke and struggles big time to answer cues. Well, that's just sad that somebody had a stroke, you know, whoever it was. I don't care who it was, you know. That's terrible to hear someone had a stroke and, you know, if they were struggling through a, a debate. First of all, Dr. Oz and Fetterman, here's a couple of goof fucks having a debate against each other. I mean, what the hell kind of debate was that? You know what I mean? I mean, they, don't both those guys suck? With that le Let's get started, Mr. Fetterman. We're going to begin with you. Your political experience includes serving as the mayor of Braddock, a small borough near Pittsburgh. I don't know, man. They both look terrible. <clears throat> Fetterman split on abortion rights. I don't know. I'll be the next to have a stroke. Do we, do we have the full debate somewhere? I can't find the full debate. We are going to move on to the next topic, and this has come up earlier, and that is the issue of fracking. Pennsylvania only trails Texas in terms of natural gas production. Both of you... You actually watch this shit tonight? ...have taken shifting positions on the issue of fracking. Mr. Oz, we begin with you. First of all, Dr. Oz is a fucking fake weirdo. And Fetterman looks like a drug addict. You wrote a column in 2014 calling for no fracking pending health study results. But in a video posted on social media in March, you said, quote, natural gas guarantees high paying skilled jobs right here in Pennsylvania. So back off, Biden. Give us freedom to frack. Mr. Oz, please explain that changing position. 60 seconds. I've been very consistent. <laughs> Fracking has been demonstrated. It's a very old technology to be safe. Uh, it is a lifeline for this commonwealth to be able to build wealth, similar to what they've been able to achieve in other states. For that reason, I strongly support fracking, drilling, the piping of that natural... I just want to say Dr. Oz is part of the Hollywood elite satanic people. I know that he's the Republican here, but um, don't forget, he's part of the satanic cult. Gas, in fact... Probably. I built a facility even in Philadelphia so we can export it uh, to... And our the other guy looks like an idiot allies and help them, the ones that are struggling now in Eastern and uh, Western Europe because of the Ukrainian war. John Fetterman calls fracking a... Here, I, I think, and I don't know this yet, I may be wrong, I'm going to guess, though, I'm going to guess that I may vote for Dr. Oz if I was in this situation only for the reason that he will be better for the economy. And right now we need better jobs, better economy, and we need we need to... We need to we need to have more money. And right now, the only one that may solve that maybe might be Dr. Oz because of his right wing sort of takes. So maybe that's what you would do is vote, I guess, for him, because like he would at least the other guy would probably destroy shit. You know what I mean? So like maybe that you're forced to vote for Dr. Oz. I don't know. But it, this is a tough one to me. Who do you want, the retard or the scumbag? You know, which one do you want? So it's too bad. Uh, you know, I wish I could be there for you, Pennsylvania. I would run for you and I would take care of everything. I would be the independent that would make the Republicans and Democrats happy. If I was there for you, Pennsylvania, I'm sorry I can't be. Uh, you're stuck with these fucking goddamn cocksuckers. I'm, I apologize. Staying on Pennsylvania. He says that he would sign a moratorium to ban its per continued use. He, he, he's against pipelines. He voted or supported the vote against the Keystone Pipeline that ended up shutting it down. He supports Biden's desire to ban fracking on public lands, which are our lands, all of our lands together. This Let's see what the other guy, what does this guy sound like? He looks like a fucking, he looks like Uncle Fester's fucked fucking babysitter. A steel mill and they were going to frack to create their own energy in order to make them more competitive and i support that living closer to anybody else in pennsylvania for fracking to myself i believe that we need independence with energy and i believe i've walked that line my entire career i believe democrats mr mr fetterman i do have a specific question which you can continue on this topic but you have made two conflicting statements regarding fracking in a 2018 interview you said quote I don't support fracking at all. I never have. But earlier this month, you told an interviewer, quote, I support fracking. I support the energy independence that we should have here in the United States. So, Mr. Fetterman, please explain your changing position. 60 seconds. I like how this bitch has basically called out that they're both liars. 
Oh my god, man, they're both liars. This is hilarious. By the way, I'm only talking about this because the donator brought it up. This guy needs to work on his suit, by the way. Uh, I've, I've always supported fracking, and I always believe that independence with our energy is, is critical, and we can't be held, you know, uh, you know, ransom to somebody like Russia. You know, I've always believed that energy independence is critical, and I've always believed that, and I do support fracking. I've never taken any money from their 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 industry, but I support how critical it is that we produce our own. Is he always like this, where he seems retarded? I mean, if he had the stroke, I apologize to him. Like, I mean, if he just had a stroke, and this is why he's acting like this, then I, I feel bad. But is this guy always like this? Holy Christ. That guy does not look well. I think Dr. I would, I got to tell you, man, I think I'd go with Dr. Oz. I mean, he may be a lying scumbag too, but good Lord, this guy don't seem right. Own energy and create energy independence. I must correct the record. Uh, well, he, uh, just a second. He, mo he most certainly is not reading a prompter. I will tell you that. Someone said that in the chat. He is not reading a prompter. He is trying to read his brain and it ain't reading back to him. Dr. Oz, I do want to clarify Look something. Look at Dr. Oz's fucking face. He's like, dude, what the fuck is this guy saying? Dr. Oz is like, I've been on TV for like fucking 20 years. Like, I could fucking, I could sell you fucking, I could sell a coma patient cyanide. I could sell a mother fucking. Mr. Oz, I do want to clarify Look at that, look at that. <laughs> you got that little look. Something. You're saying tonight that you support fracking, that you've always supported fracking, but there is that 2018 interview that you said, quote, I don't support fracking at all. So how do you square the two? Oh, uh, I, I, I do support fracking and I don't, I don't, I support fracking and I stand and I do support fracking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what did that lady say 2008 let's go back to that real quick i'm gonna answer the question i don't even know the answer i'm gonna answer the question let's go back real quick and then we'll get back to wrestling we're gonna get right back to wrestling in a minute but this person asked a question about the pennsylvania debate so i don't even know about this i'm just researching this right now with these two guys uh please let me run for pennsylvania support fracking and how do you square the two you support fracking that you've always supported fracking but there is that 2018 interview that you said quote i don't support fracking at all so how do you square the two well you know to be honest um i don't i don't know the context of that quote at the time and i and i suppose that over the years my mind depending on certain facts and i'm a lot more um aware of exactly what fracking is now and how it affects our environment and economy. Um, it may be possible that in years past, depending on the situation, you know, I had a different take or a different take in specific situations. I don't know the context of that quote, but what I can tell you is now for years at least, and certainly now, and probably uh, for the rest of my life until some kind of new evidence is presented right now, I do support fracking. And if I was in office, you would have um, somebody who would be in support of fracking and doing what I could to make it happen the way we want it to, uh, to benefit our economy and to benefit our state and country. Um, but yeah, that, that was an older quote and potentially it was some kind of context that I'm unaware of, but certainly my position right now, as you know, many positions change over the years. I am way more educated on fracking at this time. And because I am now educated on it, I absolutely support it. How fucking hard is it to say that? What is his answer? I, I, I support fracking. I uh, support, uh, always support fracking. I uh, support fracking. Basically, I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to re respond to that at all. I'm going to pretend that you didn't just say that and just tell you I support fracking. I support fracking. I support fracking. Uh, <laughs> what was uh, that? I, I, I do support fracking, and I don't. I don't. Just be honest. That's all people want is you to be honest. Why not just be honest? That's what I just did. If I changed how I felt about fracking, hey, listen, as we get older, we get smarter. And as we get smarter, we get better. And as we get better, we make better decisions. In 2018, out of context, maybe, because I don't think I ever really fully did, you know, didn't support fracking. But 
you know, be that as it may, at this point, I now understand fracking way more than I ever did back then now that I've been educated on it. And with that knowledge, I know that I'm able to make a confident statement now that after maybe going back and forth over the years, I fully support it now. And I could tell you those reasons why I don't have enough time right now, but I certainly do. So there will be no there will be no backtracking or change in my platform going forward. If elected, I you're electing someone who believes in the fracking. And I have a plan to make it happen the right way and so that we all benefit from it financially and economically. Hello? The fuck answer is this? Anyway, let's we'll just get this answer and we'll move back to wrestling. I don't know why we're talking about this. Do you support fracking? And I don't I don't I support fracking and I stand and I do support fracking. Okay, thank you, Mr. Federman. On I'm sorry, to the Lisa. There, there's not just a statement you read. There are multiple there's pictures uh, of him signing we a have to go. We have to move on. But we I, have I, to get the fundamentals of the truth out we, here. John we Federman have a over lot of and topics. over again took positions against energy. We have a lot of topics. You will have a chance to have. Just take the win, Dr. Oz. Just take the win. You've already won. You don't need to go paint the pictures and all the other things you just mentioned. You don't need to do it. The people just saw right there that he's afraid to answer the question. You already won, Dr. Oz. You don't need to say anything. But, but we, no, you don't need to do anything. He just buried himself, bro. He just buried himself. Anyway, let's continue on with the wrestling talk or whatever you guys want to talk about when you do, hey, when you donate and you say something, I'll, I'll observe it. I just did right there. I think Dr. Oz is going to come off more competent. He may be an evil Hollywood child molester or something, allegedly. But, um, you know, it looks like he is going to win, though, because this Fetterman guy looks like a looks like a meathead. Shit bum. I don't know. I'm going to see <clears throat> Okada live in NYC and JPW show Friday. Oh, damn. Alex Oli with the two dollar super chat party. I'm going to go see Okada live in New York City, New Japan on Friday. Enjoy that, man. Get some pictures. Hey, maybe jack him off and then say Joe Cronin and take a and take a video of it. That'd be cool. You know what I mean? We'll see. Please elect me, Pennsylvania. I'll save you. Uh, good Lord. That state's in trouble. Those are the two mind fuckers that are running for their stuff. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I should have put fracking in the title of this video. Probably would have done even better. Good Lord. You all oh. have decided to take your hard-earned money and to fund my Are show. Are you serious? To fund what I do. To fund what I believe in. To fund my godly ass. JCS Army... Donate to me. Yes, it's the ghost from the coast. Single-handedly funding the show. What up, Joey? Adorable cat. Watch the movie The Barbarian on HBO Max. Shit was crazy good. Really? That sounds like something that Leah might like, too. Uh, we're in episode six or seven of Game of Thrones House of Dragons, but uh, that's a good idea. I'll check that out. Is it new? That sounds like something me and Leah would like. Oh, you know what we got to watch still? Is I got to watch... Um, you know what we never saw in the theater that we wanted to see in the theater was that Vikings movie that was out. What was that called? Isn't that on HBO 2 or something like that? I got to remind Leah about that. We never watched it. And I'm like, I bet you Leah would like that too. Man. I don't know. Yo, Ghost from the Coast, thank you, man, for, for single-handedly funding this show tonight, basically. Um, thank you so much, bro. Was that $60? Thank you, dude. I hadn't gone live today. I hadn't really been able to do much, and uh, that's really badass, bro. That that saves the show tonight, it looks like, a little bit. At least it saves, uh, you know, being on for, what, 45 minutes now? That's pretty cool. Thank you, sir. It's on Peacock. Oh, it's on Peacock? All right. Well, we got Peacock, so that's good. That's fine. 
It's going to work. We'll be good with that. Full of twists and turns. Um, oh, The Northman. Yeah, there you go, uh, Cobain. Thank you. The Northman. Yeah, we were going to go to the movie theaters to see The Northman, but we never got, we never could get a second and a babysitter and all that sort of thing was, you know, we were really busy. So, but now it's probably, we can watch it in the basement late at night or something. Even now we got to wait till everybody's in bed and try to sneak and watch something and whatever else. So HBK, the new Pat Batterson. Yeah. Right. Remember the other day when I showed you that video of him, like dick hugging that guy, man. Whoo. Pat Karn. Sorry, man. What's up? The Viking movies on Peacock. Okay, good. The Northman's on Peacock. Terrifier too. I haven't seen that either. Uh, I'll be going to watch. But, I mean, I pretty much got everything I wanted to say about Raw out the way. I mean, I've been ranting on Raw all night pretty much. That, Like I said, this is the Monday Night Mid-Card. We're not going to call it Raw anymore. We're going to call it Monday Night Mid-Card. None of these people feel like superstars. Last uh, Monday Night's Raw was atrocious. I predicted the ratings dead on. Um, we all pretty much did. Uh, it wasn't hard to do if you had a brain. Um, we knew the third hour was going to be oblivious, just abysmal rather is the word. And we knew that Bailey was go to sleep type of situation heat. Like, I mean, go to bed. Players are now scissoring during the MLB playoff games. So there you go. So AEW is having an effect now on everybody, which something WWE is not doing. Back in the day, we were all running around in middle school, suck it, and the teachers couldn't figure it out. Now everyone's running around scissoring everybody. And uh, does WWE have that influence right now? No. No. So that's not good for them. Not good. The Ghost from the Coast, thank you for the $60, man. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshipers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. I chose Sean over Hunter because with NXT and before the NXT UK dorks came in. 2.0 was about developing new stars, Mandy Rose, longer title reigns, <laughs> Braun Breaker and not competing with him. 2.0 was more watchable than Raw. Yeah, it was, but I mean, why would you... You raised a piece of shit! Why would you get rid of Hunter, though? Hunter was awesome. Allison Tuckwab! Three months in a row. Three months in a row. As a member, Allison Tuckwa. They can't do that, Devante. It'll show they still want you to know. What? Scissor me. Oh, give you African warriors? Yeah, I think my wife loves Viking stuff, though. My wife, like, really loves Viking stuff. I don't think she'd be into African stuff. Because clearly she's a racist. She's a racist, guys. Except she can't be a racist. My wife can't be a racist because when somebody said the N-word on the show and called somebody the N-word, my wife's soul almost exploded. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying... My wife is not somebody who, like, is like those white Karens who are more offended for, for you than you because that's just ridiculous. It's just classic, like people trying to be more offended than other people should be because they're so full of themselves and weird. But, yeah, I know my wife's not racist because, uh, you know, nobody would react like this, you know, to that. Call it a night. Is that what you're saying? Because nobody would react like this. Call it a night. Is that what you're saying? Because no one's done it. Is that what you guys hey, are saying? I think that Heist doesn't have that the balls like, to put good. that belt on the line. God damn. I'd do it. Heist is, Heist is a fucking pussy. Oh! What the I'm fuck? Keeping... Drew, oh, what no. the you fuck is. What are you here, doing? Here, here. <laughs> I don't think my wife would react that way. You know what I mean? She wouldn't go. <laughs> so, but she she does like Vikings. She also loves Egypt. I don't know, Egypt and Vikings, but for some reason, I don't know, I guess she doesn't like African culture. I don't know. 
Heist is a fucking pussy nigger. Oh, what the fuck? fuck? Ah! Somebody ever, if somebody ever called my wife racist, I'd just play the, that clip. You think my wife's racist? Oh, yeah, listen to this. This guy says the N-word. My wife does this. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Hey, Joe, you remember Boyd Pierce? He's better than Kevin Patrick. I don't remember Boyd Pierce, but, yeah, I'm sure he was. I bet he, I bet he was better than uh, Kevin Patrick. I mean, listen, I don't... So the thing is, I like Kevin Patrick. I would employ him if I was on Raw. I would want him as an announcer guy in the back, just like Byron Saxton. But he's just not the main... He's not the Monday, the voice of Monday Night Raw. Are you the voice of Monday Night Raw? Because you're not. Basically. That it does sound like a like a visceral orgasm. What the hell? I sent Leah a message and she didn't send me one back. Now I'm getting sad. Do you know how sad I get when my wife doesn't send me a message back within like five seconds? I'm gonna start to cry. You know what I mean? Oh, wait. She sent me a message on Battle.net. What's this about? Or maybe she didn't. Did she? No, she's not even on here. Let me see. Oh, you are? She's messaging me now. Hang on. Uh, my son's eyes are insanely red. Huh. Okay. I'm having a little conversation. Excuse me, everybody. What up, G? No, she didn't hear me. She's just going to bed. She said she's really tired. What? I, it's on. I found. I found the blanket. <clears throat> How you doing, everybody? All right. No, no, my, my son's eyes are all red or something. He woke up crying and screaming. So he had a meltdown because he the dog, like, I don't know, he was, like, having all these meltdowns because he was tired, obviously, and it was, like, 6 p.m. So I sent him to bed. I was like, dude, get out of here. I was like, go up to bed because he was, like, flipping out and stuff. And I'm like, dude, go up to your room and go to sleep or something or go, you know, go take a time out. Well, he went up to his room, and he did. He went to bed. Tried to wake him up at 7, tried to wake him up at 8. He never woke up. Well, he woke up screaming uh, th like 20 minutes ago. And he either and he said his eyes were bothering him. His eyes are all bloodshot, red, and swollen and stuff. I just think it's clogged. It might be clogged tear ducts after crying. That's what I think it is. Uh, but I don't know. I'm no doctor. But uh, I bet you it's uh, clogged uh, tear ducts. Because he went to sleep with like huge like tears and you know whatever, so I'm maybe that's what it is. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so now he's awake though. So now he's not gonna go to bed probably till like midnight again, because he slept all that time and now he's up and his eyes hurt. So probably when I get off of here, I'll probably end up go hanging out and watching a movie with him until he falls asleep again. Uh, people want the Astros to beat the Phillies. Wow. I don't know. Uh, JBL is probably, I'd say JBL is one of the best things, um, about, uh, raw really. 
Uh, I think maybe one friend, uh, Devante, and they she doesn't see many of them at all much that anymore really, but uh, she has one. But it's like she doesn't see her a lot, and then um, her cousin is really close to her, and her cousin's Japanese. But uh, yeah, that's about it. She wasn't a big friend person. She only had like, you know. T- you know, five to ten kind of friends who are really like her friends, but they're like a little, you know, like a circle of 10, 15 friends or so. Whereas, and they're more close though. The thing about her friends is they're more close. Whereas my friends, I was like friends with so many different people, but I wasn't close with anyone really, except for the people that were in my band. And it, they were a grade older than me. And, you know, we all broke up when I was in 11th grade. So, I sort of like, I, I guess my best friend in high school is, one of my best friends in high school, um, I haven't, I don't know where he went, I haven't seen him in six years, seven years, and he has no phone number, and I have his sister on Facebook, and I, I, I reach out to his sister all the time, and I'm like, hey, where's your brother, and she's like, I don't know, he hates me and I hate him, I'm like, okay, so they haven't talked in forever, so I don't know where this guy is, he has no Facebook, he has no anything, I don't know, bro. But my friend that I grew up with, my friend Bob, I mean, we're we're friends. And then Troy's my friend. So, um, But a- anybody from high school, I could probably message tomorrow and I could go hang out with them. You know what I mean? But I don't have any like, you know what I mean? Like circle of friends like my wife might have. You know what I mean? It's weird. But I've got a lot of friends. That makes any sense. <clears throat> <clears throat> what the hell? Is there something downloading on my computer right now? Uh, Bullfrog did tell me goodbye, you know, so even though, even though, uh, even though Bullfrog, uh, lost and was unable to come back to the show, it doesn't matter anyway, because it could be pink eye TJB, uh, because, um, it could be pink eye. It could be, I guess, but I don't, I don't know. Um, because, uh, Bullfrog did message me and say that he was going to be leaving though permanently though. So even if he had, even if he had come back. He would have he would have left anyway, based on the message that I got from him. So it did, you know you're almost happy he did lose, because even if he'd won, he probably never would have come back. Do you know what I mean? But that being said, by the way, Bullfrog's picture after he texted me on uh, Skype to tell me about this, I got to show you this man. Bullfrog's photo on his Skype is a photo of me and him. From the show the other day next to each other. Oh my god, dude. That is too funny. I found that to be hilarious. What up, Jay? Gibson. Uh, no, I'm not watching NBA tonight. Um, I got the Bruins game on. I'm watching the hockey game, but it's over, actually. Or at least it is for me. Maybe I lost it. I don't know. Um, but no, I haven't watched uh, today at all. No basketball today. I haven't really seen any hockey but some of the Bruins. And I uh, have not, obviously, I'm still, like, in, like, you know, suicide mode after, uh, you know, what the uh, Patriots looked like last night. You know, Zappy came in, and everybody was like, yeah, fuck yeah, Zappy's in, let's go. And then he crushed it, and then all of a sudden they just went back to shit, and it was like, oh. So Mac Jones looked terrible, and we didn't play well. And then Zappy came in, and all of a sudden, boom, we're let's go. And it was like, oh, my God. And then, oh, no, now we're also going to suck again. So it was, like, weird. It was, like, from, like, what is going on to, oh, my God, we're alive, to, oh, back to just trash. And so it was like, okay, so now both quarterbacks look stupid. So bringing in both quarterbacks to that atrocious game last night ended up just making everything not good. 
So if I was Bill Belichick, I would just start the next guy. I would just start the quarterback. I, I, I don't even know what I would do. I, I would start one guy the next week. I would say, you know what, guys? I'm going to go with – I'd probably go with Mac Jones again because – or, you know, I might go with Zappy just to be like, you know what? I'm going to play him until he loses. And when he loses, then the fans will be like, okay, he lost. And now they'll accept Mac Jones coming back. And I might even say that to Mac Jones. Be like, listen, dude, every time you come out here and aren't doing well, the fans are going to flip out that now they want Zappy in. So let's just put you out there, put him out there. And and when he and if he doesn't fail and he kick, continues to kick ass and we just go to the playoffs, then – well, sorry, you know, you. I guess you lose. But if he goes out there and has troubles, you know, which he probably will, you know, then we'll put you in. And then it's like there's no excuse anymore, and then we'll ride you the way we're supposed to. How about that? But I don't know, man. It's weird to, what he did. The I, I don't know. That was very strange. Very strange. If anything, football is not fixed because if it was fixed, then Zappy would have came in and saved the day and won all the game and the Patriots, oh, wow, and Zappy. But instead he came in and looked, oh, my God, Zappy, and then he went to shit. And it was like, oh, well, wait. You know, he didn't really go to shit. The defense just blew it. But whatever, either way. And Zappy did botch a handoff. It's true. <clears throat> so, you know, my computer is freaking out right now. What is this? Is it downloading something? I mean, what is going on? Yep, it's downloading something. Yeah, let me let me close that. All right. So I had um, Battle.net open, and it was downloading something huge, and it was definitely affecting my computer. Um, but that being said, man, um, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to get out of here. just wanted to come on and talk about how bad the ratings were for a few minutes like I did, and I went through how the whole WWE Raw is WWE Monday Night Midcard. You're watching WWE Monday Night Mid-Card. You know, a bunch of mid fucking mid-card bullshit. That's what you're watching. And I hope you guys all have a good rest of the night. I'll see you tomorrow for AEW. AEW Dynamite will probably, will definitely beat Raw. I mean, can you imagine AEW Dynamite doing worse than Raw tomorrow? I can't imagine that after this Monday Night Raw. I mean, it will do worse in the ratings. So, you know, maybe... That's something for Raw to be happy about. Um, Random Gamer Schmo, thanks for the message on uh, Discord, man. Thanks for the support the other night during the Bullfrog thing, too, by the way. Thank you for that. Zappy pooped his pants. I agree. I agree. Zappy pooped his pants. The Bears suck, and yet they beat the Patriots. I don't know why. But, uh, hey, man. It is what it is. AEW is never worse than Ross as Ghost from the Coast. You're right about that. Absolutely right about that. Well, I'm going to go check on my son and see what's up with his eyes and try to get him to bed and do all that stuff. And uh, you guys, you keep it hard. I will see you tomorrow. We will see you tomorrow for AEW Dynamite. Hit that like button, share it everywhere, and thanks to the people that joined patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Monday Night Midcard. Draws horrible ratings. This is Jim Cornette, and the views that I'm about to express are not necessarily those of anybody else but me, but they ought to be, and as a matter of fact, they probably are. You know, a lot of things in the wrestling world make me cranky these days, especially the way that some talent is treated and some talent is looked at by not only the promoters, but the wrestling fans as well. For example, a man like Arn Anderson, who just had to retire from this sport after giving it his entire life because of an injury that he suffered. A guy like Nature Boy Ric Flair, who in my opinion is one of the greatest talents in the history of this business. Guys like Mankind, Cactus Jack, Dude Love, whatever you want to call him. Great talents in the WWF or WCW. But who gets a lot of the attention from the wrestling fans especially? Guys like the NWO, the New World Order. You know, all the fans think these guys are so cool and so sweet.
sweet and so funny. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the NWO is like a bunch of guys meeting out in the backyard in a clubhouse in a tree. <laughs>